thanks. Thanks to everyone for coming and to, to Books Inc. for, for hosting me. And I just want to say that the, the Barbie and the Supreme Court, I don't think we're in the same post. I think those were two separate posts, I'm hoping. I haven't really checked feministing as much as I should since I've been kind of running around. Um, so before I read from the book, I thought I would just say a couple of words to kind of put the tone of the book in context. Um, full Frontal Feminism was really a natural progression from the work that I do on feministing.com. Are people familiar with the site at all? Raise your hands. Okay. So just for people who aren't familiar with the site, it's a blog that's um, geared towards young women that's about feminism. It's kind of informal and fun. And one of the things I started to notice after a while of doing feministing was that we were getting these emails from younger women who kind of had stumbled upon the site by accident. Uh, we got a whole bunch of younger women who did a Google search on Jessica Simpson and ended up on feministing because we wrote about her, her creepy dad and how he talks about her boobs too much. Um, yeah, I mean, seriously. So, and, and we get these emails saying, wow, I had no idea that this is what feminism was about. And I thought feminism was for old ladies. And I thought, you know, feminists hated men. And, you know, it, it, started, it was just amazing to me how, how much they had bought in to all of these ridiculous anti-feminist stereotypes that I think a lot of us who, are, who work on feminism take for granted, that we know are ridiculous, that we know are so silly. But we kind of forget that people buy into them, um, especially younger women. So it was really from that that I wanted to write this book. Um, I wanted to write the book for young, for young women who aren't necessarily politically active, who are probably afraid to call themselves feminists. And I wanted to write something that was really informal, accessible, um, and most of all, fun to read. Because I think that's something that's kind of been missing from the feminist equation, that you know, feminism is fun and that it is cutting edge. And uh, you know, most importantly, I think that it, it makes your life better. So that said, I'm gonna hop right into it. And this is right in the very beginning from the first chapter, which is called, I'm a hard, uh, you're a hardcore feminist. I'm a hardcore feminist, but they need to know that too. You're a hardcore feminist, I swear. What's the worst possible thing you can call a woman? Don't hold back now. If you guys wanna shout them out, that's fine too. No? Okay. You're probably thinking of words like slut, whore, bitch, cunts. I told you not to hold back skank. Okay now, what are the worst things you can call a guy? Fag, girl, bitch, pussy. I've even heard the term mangina. That's my personal favorite. Uh, notice anything. The worst thing you can call a girl is a girl. The worst thing you can call a guy is a girl. Being a woman is the ultimate insult. Now tell me that's not royally fucked up. Recognizing the screwed nature of this little exercise doesn't necessarily make you a feminist, but it should. Most young women know that something is off. And even if we know that some things are sexist, we're certainly not ready to say that we're feminists. It's high time to get past the I'm not a feminist but stuff. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not a feminist or anything, but it's total bullshit that Walmart won't fill my birth control prescription. Do you think it's fair that a guy will make more money doing the same job as you? Does it piss you off and scare you when you find out about your friends getting raped? Do you ever feel like shit about your body? Do you ever feel like something is wrong with you because you don't fit into this bizarre ideal of what girls are supposed to be like? Well, my friend, I hate to break it to you, but you're a hardcore feminist, I swear. And there's a little subchapter or subtitle called Feel Good Feminism. For some reason, feminism is seen as super anti. Anti-men, anti-sex, anti-sexism, anti-everything. And while some of those antis aren't bad things, it's not exactly exciting to get involved in something that is seen as so consistently negative. The good news is feminism isn't all about antis. It's progressive and as cheesy as this sounds, it's about making your life better. As different as we all are, there's one thing most young women have in common. We're all brought up to feel like there's something wrong with us. We're too fat. We're dumb. We're too smart. We're not ladylike enough. Stop cursing, chewing with your mouth open, speaking your mind. We're too slutty. We're not slutty enough. Fuck that. You're not too fat. You're not too loud. You're not too smart. You're not unladylike. There is nothing wrong with you. I know it sounds simple, but it took me a hell of a long time to understand this. And once I did, damn, did it feel good. Why go through your life believing you're not good enough and that you have to change? Feminism not only allows you to see through the bullshit that would make you think there's something wrong with you, but also offers ways to make you feel good about yourself and to have self-respect without utilizing any mom popular sayings, like keep your legs together, or boy popular screamings, like show me your tits. Really, imagine how nice it would be to realize that all the stuff you've been taught that makes you feel crappy just isn't true. It's like self-help times 100. But all that said, I really do understand the hesitancy surrounding the F word. My own experience with the exercise that kicked off this chapter, the what's the worst thing uh, you can call a woman, 
was presented by a professor on the first day of a woman's literature class after she asked how many of us were feminists. Not one person raised a hand, not even me. My excuse written thinking at the time was, oh, there's so many different kinds of feminism. How can I say I know what they're all about? Blah, blah, blah. I'm a humanist. Blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. When I think back on it, I knew I was a feminist. I was just too damn freaked out to be the only one raising her hand. And Samita just walked in, who's also a feministing blogger. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and, and read a bit from the sex chapter, which is called Feminists Do It Better and Other Sex Tips. I'm better in bed than you are and I have feminism to thank for it. There's nothing more hackneyed than the notion that feminists hate sex, but I guess if you buy the ugly man-hating stereotype, hating sex follows. Feminists do it better because we know how to get past all the bullshit. Women's sexuality is often treated like a commodity, a joke, or a sin. This is especially true for us younger women who end up getting totally screwed by social influences telling us what hot or desirable behavior is. Generally, it's flashing boobs or faux lesbian makeout sessions. Never been a fan of either. When you're getting abstinence-only education during the day and Girls Gone Wild commercials at night, it's not exactly easy to develop a healthy sexuality. You're taught that sex before marriage is bad, 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 but that if you want to be a spring break hottie, you better start making out for the camera. While these two messages are seemingly conflicting, they're actually promoting the same idea, that young women can't make their own decisions about sex. Whether it's a teacher telling you not to or a cameraman telling you how to, having sex that's about making yourself happy is a big no-no these days. Shit, you can't even buy vibrators in some states. And I think right now it's at about 11 states or 8 states. One of those two. That's enough for me, though. Um, <laughs> to get unscrewed, you really need to take a close look at all the insane things stacked up against women having a good old time in bed. And after marveling at the ridiculousness of things like the sexual double standard and the faux sexy crap that's forced down your throat, you just learn to say, fuck it. Just don't do it. Subtitle. Women are taught that we're only supposed to have sex under these bizarre arbitrary guidelines, only if you're married, only if, it's for pro only if it's for procreation, and only if another girl if guys can watch. So unless you're gonna do it the way other people want, just don't. You're a dirty lollipop. This is about abstinence-only education, which for any of you who read Feministing um, know is a tremendous pet peeve of mine, especially now, um, I don't know if folks know, but I think it was last week or the week before that Congress just passed some legislation that's gonna extend the funding for abstinence-only education. So more to look forward to. Uh, nothing freaks me out slash pisses me off more than abstinence-only education. Basically, it's the most naive form of sex education you can get. Sex is bad, don't have it until you're married, contraception doesn't work. Somehow educators think this will convince kids not to have sex. Compare that to comprehensive sex education that teaches abstinence, but also makes sure that teens have medically correct information about contraception, STDs, and the like. It's reality-based sex ed that understands that no matter how many scare, toxic, scare tactics you throw at people, they're still going to do what they want. This isn't, to, this isn't to say that I think holding off on sex is bad. Abstain all you want, ladies. But if you're holding off, do it because you're waiting to have sex on your own terms. And don't not have sex because you think you're worthless if you do, which is exactly what these classes are saying. As it stands now, the government is spending $178 million a year to tell young women they're big whores if they give it up and various other untruths. Most abstinence-only education programs give out false information about sex. All of it's sexist, most of it bordering on the ridiculous. The medical misinformation is not just untrue, it's straight up dangerous. For example, these programs teach that not only that condoms don't protect you from pregnancy or STDs and HIV, but that they could cause cancer, condom cancer. Um, and this is actually from a program, uh, it's amazing. After kids are exposed to this bullshit, they're less likely to use contraception because it doesn't work anyway, right? Because of abstinence-only education, we're going to have a generation of sexual dum-dums. It seems unfathomable, but somehow teaching the truth about sex and contraception is just too scary for some folks. Conservatives and right-wing religious groups think that it's going to make us all slutty. I know proponents of the all-holy abstinence agenda bristle at the idea of girls being taught how to put a condom on a penis, even though studies show that real sex ed, you know, the kind that tells the truth, significantly reduces teenage girls' STD rates. Not to mention, comprehensive sex ed actually delays teen sex and ensures kids are making informed decision. decisions. Isn't that more important than being afraid your kid isn't a virgin? Apparently, not so much. Schools that get federal funding for abstinence-only sex ed can't teach safe sex practices. You heard right. They can't even talk about it, because God forbid your kids have safe sex. Much better that they resort to only a slut would use a condom sex. But what's just as disturbing as the bad science behind these programs is the unapologetic sexist crap that they're spewing. One program teaches that women need financial support, while men mean admiration. Another tells students, and this is a quote, 